are listening to Grasslands Radio, CUZ FM. And if you've just turned on and tuned in, you're listening to Billy T on Grasslands Radio, CUZ FM. And you can talk to me on 310 310. I'll be with you until 10 o'clock. So if you're into a bit of ranting, raving, bleating, or just plain listening, why don't you give us a call? And we'll let everyone else suffer as well. 310, 310. Let's talk about the whole Earth movement. And whoa, the phones are hot tonight. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Sarah Leah, ever heard of preventative medicine, Billy? Not in relation to the whole Earth movement, sir. Hey, no, preventative medicine. Forget the drugs. Drink water and get plenty of exercise, and I guarantee that within one generation, doctors and the medicines would have all but disappeared. Yeah, but I don't think it's quite as simple as that, sir. So now, what about these heart transplant programs? <laughs> They're costing us millions of dollars every year. So what do you suggest we spend the money on? Nuclear submarine. <laughs> from the health budget? Well, the stuff all left in defence budget, it's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, maybe we could call it uh, nuclear medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a shame. We seem to have lost him. <laughs> Come in, Jock. Uh, good day to you, Billy. What an idiot that last caller was, eh? I mean, if he'd bothered to read past the nude female on the third page, he'd know that it costs considerably more to maintain a maximum security prisoner than it does a transplant patient. That's right, Jock, and uh, I can understand now why the Minister of Health does not support heart transplant programs. And why is that, Billy? Well, she figures if, if the MPs don't have any hats, well, then nobody else needs one either. <laughs> In New Jungle Green, what a sight to be seen. Fantastic floodlights they've got over there. Makes it look like the middle of the afternoon. Greg, this is the middle of the afternoon. No, it's not. It's three o'clock in the morning. Not in Wales, boy. Oh, yeah, of course. I keep forgetting. It's the Eastern Hemisphere, isn't it? Oh. You know, Greg, if you went to tell his brother, I'd think about calling out the armed defenders for me. Why? To stop me from shooting you. Oh, you can't shoot my brother. Oh, well, why not? You get too much blood on the carpet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, have you got enough snacks there, Greg? Yeah, I got the esky full of castle, mate. I got the potato chips, pizza. Oh, and I nearly forgot my pies. Oh, what? Steak, oh. mince, bacon and egg, get, fish. Get, 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 get. What are you having, get, Billy? Get. Who knows? <laughs> Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of celery sticks. A dimension of... Cottage cheese, a dimension of mineral water, mm, stink. Oh, jeepers, that's bunny food. Here, Billy, have a pie. <laughs> Billy! Looking, I was just looking at it. Uh, to see how that... Yeah, yeah, well, you just look at it good and hard because it's the last pie you're going to see. Oh, OK. You're staying up for the match, still. You bet I am. You hate watching rugby. I'm not going to be watching the rugby. I'm going to be watching you and Greg's pies. Dad, can you turn it down a bit, please? Oh, what's the matter, Natty? Aren't you going to watch the footy? Rugby. Yeah, 
Yeah. Doesn't like sport, eh? She's mad about sport. Oh, yeah, what kind? Oh, she and her mates have got this discus team, eh? Oh, where do they play that? Up in the room. <laughs> in a room? Discus? Yeah. They sit on the round on the bed and discuss this and discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, where is Lydia? I've already told you she's at an overnight beach barbecue. Overnight? I don't like the sound of that. Billy, you agreed. I might have agreed to the barbecue, but I doubt if I agreed to this overnight business. Who's she overnighting with? She's anyway? with her polytech friends. I don't trust that one with the plaques. Shane is a lovely boy. <laughs> oh, he's a boy, is he? What does he wear plaques for? Well, Lydia says the plaques are gender neutral. Gender neutral? What's oh. that? Oh, it's um, the gear on a car. You use it when you don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Discus! Discuss! <laughs> hey, I've been meaning to ask you, can anyone play for the Maori All Blacks? Of course not. You've got to be a Maori. So I couldn't play for them? No. Because I'm not a Maori? Because you're an Australian. Oh, right. Yeah. What if I was Chinese? We well, couldn't play for anyone. You'd be too busy buying up Pakaranga. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, be quiet. They could score off this. Shelf for decked him, eh? Quiet. He's lining up. No, he won't get that. Shh, quiet. He won't. Kick. Yes. Yes, it's going through. Yes, it's through. The sticks are three pointer. <laughs> quick, quick, hide me. I'm escaping from repression. What? Hey, hey, what's that? Toy door. I'll hide them in the bathroom. So this isn't toy door season. Lydia, what is going on? I'm being culturally repressed. Now, I've been with you guys all night, OK? You're my alibi. No, I'm your father. Lydia, what's going on? I've been harvesting the ancient Kai Moana of our people. You, you've been pinching toy rolls out I of season. I have not. I've been exercising my traditional rights. Just packing up when this fascist from Mephis showed up. What? Fisheries inspectors, they chased us all the way back. Lydia, that's illegal. You could get fined. Not us. We're the tongue of Fenua. Our rights are enshrined in the treaty. Hey, hang on, Lydia. Now, hey, what's now, a what toy happened? rower? Oh, it's a shellfish, sort of like a giant pippy. Oh, yeah. uh, what's yeah, a listen, giant Lydia. pippy? <laughs> sort of like a small toy rower. Now, what Lydia, did listen, fisheries, want... What did the fisheries inspectors say? They didn't say anything. They let you off? No, they didn't catch us. Hey, hang on, we're not going to get involved in anything here. You won't I have to, Dad. I don't think they even saw me get out of the car. Anyway, I'm not scared of them. Dad, you've got to save me. Tell. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty certain. I'm quite sure that she's sort of been with us all night, haven't you, Tell? Oh, I think so. You know what it's like with a big family. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a family? I mean, people coming and going, tidying their rooms, making up. Please, the scenes. please. Look, what's this all about? Uh, it's about the uh, illegal taking of toy rolls. He's in a try. <laughs> Forward pass. Oh, French referees. Uh, toy roll? No, no, I haven't seen one of those in years. You know, the season being closed and everything, I, I wouldn't even know what one looked like now. No. Hey, what are these toy roll doing in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe they were going to wash their hair or something. <laughs> this isn't a laughing matter, Mr. James. <laughs> yes? Gender neutral! <laughs> Bond to Billy! Greg! Yeah? Shut up. All right. What do they taste like? What? The Togamaras. <laughs> well, I mean, are they anything like Morton Bay bugs? I don't know. What do Morton Bay bugs taste like? Oh, well, that's a bit of a poser, Bill. Right. You all know what mince on toast tastes like? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's sort of like the opposite of that. <laughs> I bet they're not game to prosecute. Why not? You pinched them. I did not. I exercised my traditional right of food gathering. Exactly. You pinched them. You know, they're going to exercise their traditional right to prosecute. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> they're losing those cases. The treaty is alive and stalking the land. So is the Ministry of Ag and Fish. Yeah. Not scared of those Mephis from Fefish. What? Fascists from Mephish. You know who I'm talking about. The treaty is my korowai. You what? My cloak. Korowai is Māori for cloak. Don't they teach you anything at school? Ah, oh, so what's Māori for whopping great fine then? <laughs> Won't come to that. They're too windy, just like the tepi tepi. The what? The tepi tepi, jellyfish. No, they're not. They got hard shells, the ones in the bucket. Hey? <laughs> the tarry rowers. She's talking about jellyfish now. Oh, strike me. You didn't pinch some of those as well, mate. <laughs> well, what do they taste like? I didn't pinch anything, Uncle Greg. I harvested my toilet oil. Yeah, all right. Keep your hair on. 
So, what do these terrier rower things actually do? Not a lot. They just lay around on beaches doing as little as possible. Like most Australians. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very witty, Willie. Mm. So, how much do you think they're going to ding you for, Liddy? Yeah, well, the guy told us up to about 500 bucks a fish. Crikey. Yeah, I bet they're having a good old fry up down to the massive offish, but... <laughs> they won't be eating them. They'll be using them as evidence. Fool, they'll be a bit high by the time they get into court. Well, I'd come to court. In fact, I'd be surprised if we ever hear from them again. Lydia. Lyd... Lydia! What's Marty for? Bailiff. Summons Bluey. The tippy tippy strikes back. <laughs> Don't get upset. I'm not upset. What? I'm wrapped. What? This is just what I wanted. What? We could make it a test case. Proceedings in Māori. I could demand United Nations observers at the trial. The hollow sham of Pākehā justice will be done and will be seen to be done. I wish this was over and done. So I spoke to Dez at Fogarty and Fogarty. Mm -hmm. And he said, see, all this, all this white tangy business is still pretty much a grey area. But he said, her being a student and a first offender, she'll get off with a warning. Well, that's a relief. No, it's not. Lydia doesn't want to know. She wants to start the next Maori Wars Well, or we something. just have to talk her out of it. Talk me out of what? All this palaver about the trial. You just have to take Desi's advice. He is a lawyer. I've got my own lawyer. And what's more, he's Tanga de Whenua. Yeah, but is he LLB? No, Dad. He's LLM. He's got a master's degree. And I'm seeing him at four o'clock this afternoon. You better go with her. All I right. don't need Dad. Yeah, you're going to need Dad when the bill comes in. Masters don't come cheap. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, now don't leave anything out. All right? Tell them everything. Oh, I'm sorry. We got tied up in the high court. Come on in. Kia ora. <sighs> yeah, g'day. <laughs> and you must be Miss James. Ms. And this is my father. Yeah, I'm Ms. to James. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Are you on the radio? Yeah, that's right. Hey there. I read you the other night. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the jock's a real character. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one about... Uh, the one about being half Maori, half Jewish. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what is it? Um, half of me wants to get things cheap, and the other half just wants to pinch it. Yeah, you sound just right. like him. Mr. Turangi. Oh, yes. Look, I'm sorry. Um, I've spoken to Mapish. They're quite uh, reasonable. They don't want to get caught up in any of this treaty kerfuffle. The treaty is not kerfuffle, Mr. Turangi. It is the korowai behind which I will shelter. I'm sorry? It's a, a cloak behind which he's going to shelter. Right. Uh, which does raise one point. Uh, which tribe are you? Oh, the uh, Tainuia from Tuakina. Look, we could be struggling with the treaty defence. Why? Well, the Isle Tainuia haven't got any fishing grounds. You lot are after coal, aren't you? Are we? <laughs> oh, if there's any going, yeah. Look, the treaty is not dictated by geography. It stretches above the land like the cloud that gave its name to Aotearoa. Well, uh, Mephish don't actually see it that way. <laughs> it would be better to plead guilty, in and out, cop a small fine, bit of a lecture from the bench. Exactly what Dears Fogarty said. We'll pass it off as one of those student pranks. Prank? This wasn't a prank. It was the exercise of a right clearly embodied in Te Tiriti or Waitangi, full and undisturbed possession of lands, forests and fisheries. Right. Uh, well, I'll have to do a bit of a refresher course on the treaty. I'll ring Winston Peters. What? <laughs> well, I used to go to the same law school as old Winnie. He's up with the play on all this treaty stuff. I want the case heard on a marae. When he's connected with you lot. I could get him on the marae panel. <laughs> well, in that case, I will submit to a Pākehā court. But the proceedings must be conducted in Māori. Oh. <laughs> I went for a real problem there. Why? It can be done. Can be done, but not by me. Can't speak the Maori. <laughs> Just like your Uncle Jack. <laughs> I can see no point in discussing this any further. Inohura, Mr. Turangi. Yeah, but... well, that's fine. I sort of gathered hey. that. He was not a Maori. He was a brown Pākehā. And what's worse, he was a friend of Winston Peters. He didn't say that. He said he went to the same law school as Winston Peters. Lydia, be reasonable. The lawyers have both given you the same advice. Now, your father and I don't mind if you go with Dez or Mr. Turangi, but you've got to go with one of them. No, I don't. I've got another lawyer. 
Oh, who's it this time? Dan Mehacker. <laughs> Nigel Whitchurch. Oh, that's a good old Māori name. <laughs> Which canoe did the Whitchurch just come out on then? He may not be Māori by birth, but in his heart, he's Tanga Te Whenua. Has he got any qualifications? He's been arrested every Waitangi day since 1983, <laughs> and he's vice president of Porg. Porg? Porg, P-A-W-G. Porg? What's Porg? Pākehā's awash with guilt. Oh. It's taken over from heart. It's a new movement to belong to. Oh, and if it's all right with you, I've asked him over tomorrow night. Why can't we go over to his office? He doesn't have an office. He doesn't believe in them. Hey. May I say how much I envy and admire you, Mr. James? What's that for, Nigel? Being on the radio, you mean? No, 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 no. Uh, for being a Māori. It, it's something I feel I always missed out on. Well, Nigel, that's something you and I both missed out on. Yes, but you were fortunate enough to marry Mr. James. And may I also say that I am not only a guest in your house, but I am also a guest in your land. <laughs> right, uh, well, seeing that you're here, Nigel, you better have a beer. No, uh, relax, Billy, I'll get him. Oh. Thank you. Or, as you would say, kapai. Let's, thank you. Yeah, I know. Hey, uh, Nigel, what are you saying before about being a guest? What do you mean, mate? Well, we as Pākehā, Greg. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, mate. I'm not a Pākehā. I'm an Australian. Oh, well, take the Aborigines then, the indigenous oh, yeah. race hey, of listen, your Some country. of my best friends happen to be Abos, so before hey, hey, you go... Hey, 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 hey Greg, just... Greg. <laughs> before you relive the Murrumbidgee massacre, <laughs> we want to know what you can do for Lydia. Well, I think I should say from the outset that there's a lot more at stake here than just a few shellfish. Yeah. Well, we didn't even get to taste them. Pākehā's awash with guilt will put Lydia's oppression on the front page of every student newspaper in the land. Oh, that'll be a great help, Nigel. Yes, I thought so. And I have personally written to the United Nations Suppression of Colonialism Committee. Oh, good. They'll be here on court on Wednesday. Yes? In spirit? Why do I? <laughs> what about all this being heard in, in Maori? What's happening about that? We've changed our minds. We're going to use the language of the oppressor. Nigel speaks fluent Māori, but he feels he lacks the mana to employ our language without the backing of an iwi authority. Yes. Yes, well, that sounds like good sense to me, eh, Billy? Nigel intends to draw not only upon the fabric, but on the spirit of the treaty itself. Te wairua o te tiriti. Uh, look, look, look. We are just talking about a bucket of toheros here. Now, all we want is to get Lydia off with the least amount of hassle, that's all. But Mr. James, indigenous people have been hassled for centuries, but now the tide is on the turn. Yvonne Gooligong, she was a good one. She could control the Terps. And Mark Eller, well, he was a credit to his race. Uncle Greg? Yeah? Shut up. All right. <laughs> Nigel, you know when this is all over and we've driven the Pākehā into the sea and all that? Yes. Where are you going to live? <laughs> Mr. Whitchurch, uh, why have you requested two days for this hearing? The facts and issues seem quite straightforward to me. Perhaps on the surface they may appear quite simple, Your Honour. But I would suggest that there are complex matters of definition here. I see. For example, it will be one of my principal submissions that under the terms of the Act and the Treaty, a tohiroa can be defined as a fantail or indeed a kauri tree. <laughs> because... The fantail, the toiroa, and the kauri three are all one in the holistic view of the natural world as understood by the Maori. I'll be very interested uh, to rule on that, Mr. Whitchurch. Oh, well, I'm afraid you won't be able to, Your Honour, because my second submission is that under the principles of Rangatiratanga, you have no jurisdiction in this matter. I see. This is going to be an interesting morning, Mr. Whitchurch. Proceed. He's doing well, isn't he, Dad? Toyoroa and the fantail have much in common. They are one. Just as the kauri and the kumara are one with the eel, and the fantail and the eel are one with the weka. <laughs> and the turkey and the wally are one with the lawyer. <laughs> you claim to be a fisheries inspector. I am a fisheries inspector. That'll be for the court to decide. Mr. Whitchurch, he is a fisheries inspector. His honour has provisionally ruled 
that you are a fisheries inspector. What we want to know is, have you ever read the Treaty of Waitangi? No. Well, are you going to? No. <laughs> the court will draw its own conclusion from that sorry admission. He's cutting them to ribbons, eh, Dad? Oh, yeah, ribbons. Maybe we should have had this herd of Maori. Why? It wouldn't sound so bad. If I was to say to you, in your capacity as an alleged fisheries inspector, that the toiroa, the fantail, and the kauri tree are one, what would you say to that? I'd say that's rubbish. Oh, would you? And I'd say it's rubbish too, Mr. Whitchurch. Oh, uh, could I point out at this stage, Your Honour, that you're in no position to rule on the question of rubbish until you've heard my final submission? <laughs> If that was his best, I'd hate to see him on a bad day. Fantails and eels. I thought the judge was going to explode when Nigel started reading extracts out of the bone festival. Mum, it was relevant. Everything go all right? No, it did not. It was a disaster. You were a laughing stock. Oh, gee, that's a shame, eh? Have you been cooking something, Greg? Well, yes, 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 we have. What? Fish. What sort of fish? Shellfish. What sort of shellfish? The Tori Hooers. Jeez, they're tricky little sods to get a hold of. They scoot around all over the place. Greg, what about the fisheries inspectors? Well, I thought hey? they'd all be in court with you. And I was right. She had the whole beach to myself. But you're not even tongue at a finua. No, but I was hungry. And besides, I wanted to know what they tasted like. You're a bloody idiot. Mm. Oh, look, we're right back where we started from. All right, how many did you get? Ta-da! Oh. One. What are we going to do now? Get rid of the evidence, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh. Actually, Lydia, Lydia, you started all this. You should help finish it. Anyway, you like these, uh... Uh, uh, Billy, do you, are you allowed to eat seafood? Well, this isn't seafood. According to Nigel, this is poultry. Oh. <laughs> There, yeah. have a fantail patty. Mmm, mm, choice. Here, yeah, Natty, have a bit of Cody fritter. Mm. Ooh, wicked or what? There, I tell, get your teeth around that eel. Ooh. Well, I caught it and cooked it. <laughs> yes. Mmm. and they're not happy with it, why don't they give them back? Yeah, but then the Pākehā would have to give the land back. Well, that's all right, we'll give the original land back. If they give the original tobacco blankets back... <laughs> You're not making it very easy, eh? Yeah, nothing comes easy anymore, Billy. OK, OK, what about this? What if the Maoris wanted to make things harder as well? How? Oh, say, by, uh, by not leaping in the air at the end of a haka. That'll make things uh, harder. Yeah, harder to do what? How do for you fellas to pinch the land out from underneath us, man? <laughs> you are listening to... This was an Eisenbart production presented in association with the Broadcasting Commission with funding support from the Broadcasting Fee.